Hi and welcome. In this video, we are going to discuss about libraries and IPs in VLSI Design Flow. In fact, both libraries and IPs are the same thing, but at different levels of abstraction, they are called two different things. We will see how they are related to each other. At the end of uh, our discussion, we will definitely get a clear picture of what libraries are and what uh, what is an intellectual property, what is an IP, right? So, what is a library? Library is some pre-existing implementation of a unit of logic or functionality or a layout design okay so why do we use libraries so what is the need of it so imagine that you are an automotive uh, industry owner okay so you build cars so what you do is uh, for the car to operate properly uh, we need some chip to control right maybe an engine control module. So that chip, you can buy it or you can design on your own so that um, you can optimize it. And you made it so special that people want to choose your car because of its uh, efficiency. So now you want to design your own chip, but what part of the chip is uh, you want to design? You want to design the CPU, you want to uh, design the core of the logic, the, the digital implementation, you can build it. But it's not the only thing that uh, the car's CPU or the, the main logic requires, right? It needs uh, the peripheral uh, interface, it needs uh, analog devices so that you can take uh, input from your sensors and all those stuff. So a single SOC in modern days, it is designed, any any chip is designed as an, as an SOC mostly. So system on chip will contain a lot of parts embedded in it right it is um, fabricated as a single piece of semiconductor so are you going to design all, all these on your own for which you need we need to have uh, different teams uh, expert teams for each and every type of implementation for digital implementation you might have one one team uh, especially for the core design for core logic design and for some other so bus interface design you may have to have another team which is not feasible right you we, we may not be able to build teams and the cost of that might be more we cannot have a team simply it, it, it all comes to uh, economics finally so it's much better uh, for you to buy it from somewhere so that is where the libraries or ips come into picture there are companies that design some uh, hardware but they sell it to some other people so that is where this library come into picture so at different levels of abstraction uh, we have uh, different types of libraries okay so the logic level library contains layout of gates and cells okay normal cells and normal and or uh, nand and uh, different kinds of gates we will have in logic level libraries which are called as standard cell libraries normally even the rt level libraries contain registers multiplexers decoders functional units even these uh, functional units as in some uh, combinational logic which is um, a complex logic right so these even the flip-flop sequential uh, circuits also are included in rt level library above register transfer level library is the behavioral level library which may contain the bus interfaces the bus interfaces may include even surdies right that's the serial interface so these are analog components these components could be analog in nature the display controllers even uh, adcs dax um, so many many types of these circuits and these can be analog and uh, mixed signal designs and even general purpose processors now, this behavioral level library includes even general purpose processes. When I say general purpose processor, it's just a CPU, okay? It's it's just the core of the uh, processor. It's not the entire chip. Nowadays, uh, we look at an SOC and we say it's a CPU. It's not true. An SOC will contain everything. So this is about libraries. And what are IPs? So as we talked about the behavioral level library, Nowadays, what we have is system level integration, which we call system on a chip, right? So all the types of circuits which were then 
used as single ICs in the board. Now they are combined and fabricated in a single piece of silicon. And that's why we call them as a system on a chip. And now because of this, because of this technology, now you cannot buy a general purpose processor or a CPU separately. So if you want to buy it, you cannot buy a hardware chip. Okay, they, there is, they won't give a separate chip for you or you have to buy an entire SOC. So what we have to do is we have to use these general purpose processors or any high, high level device such as bus interfaces or, or display controllers. The, uh, these also as the RTL codes, we have to instantiate these uh, high level devices also in our SOC. So since we are taking them uh, and instantiating in our and uh, the bigger SOC, which is the system, uh, for uh, for us, that's the entire chip, right? So these bigger systems are also called as um, IPs, right? This, so this is a high level integration that happens. And this kind of system level integration has created the term called as uh, intellectual property. And this is to emphasize that core exists in an intellectual form. They, they are not given as a hardware. It exists as an intellectual form that must be protected from copying. It should not be used somewhere. It, it, it is licensed. We are not discussing about the licensing part. That's what we mean by IPs. And um, mostly the behavioral level uh, libraries, as you can see here, all the bus interfaces, display controllers, all the general purpose these are mainly called as IPs. Okay. And there are two types in IPs. Basically, one is soft IP and the other one is hard IP. And soft IPs are provided as synthesizable RTL models or RTL code or gate level netlist. Both are fine, but these are not optimized for certain uh, design or it is not op optimized for certain process technology node, right? So it can be used for any uh, process technology node and it can be editable. Now we can get, we can buy, um, a soft IP and we can make changes to it uh, whatever the changes that are needed for our design and we use it okay and the physical design has to be done on our own they won't give the physical design right and the uh, hard IPs it's complete layout implementation is done and they give only the layout implementation they don't give the source code so we cannot make any changes to hard IPs and its timing and all aspects of hard IPs are taken into consideration. And once we buy that, they will give support to us if there are any problems to these hard IPs, right? So this is uh, the difference between hard IP and soft IP. And uh, mostly the hard IPs are analog IPs. Digital IPs can also be hard IPs, but uh, it's more likely that analog IC, uh, IPs are uh, mostly hard IPs because uh, the digital team won't be able to make any changes to uh, analog IPs. And they are very, uh, the, 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 uh, the mode of design is entirely different for uh, hard IPs, uh, for analog design. So mostly the analog uh, parts come as hard IPs. So that's all for now. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching and please do subscribe to my channel and bye-bye.